Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. How did Juan Soto and the Nationals get to such a contentious place? Who or what caused the mess that is the Chicago Bears? And why the Los Angeles Angels should keep Shohei Otani for as long as they can. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. Juan Soto of the Washington Nationals is the big fish of the 2022 MLB trade deadline season. Joining me now, Paul, only his mother calls him Paul Sullivan Sully from Locked On MLB is here. And and Sully, let me ask you this basic question that I still cannot quite figure out the answer to. Why, if you're the Nationals, would you ever consider moving on from someone like this who's 23 years old? I, it's it's mind-boggling because he's basically the same age of the prospects you'd be trying to acquire right. for him. You know, he's already a seasoned veteran. He's already delivered to Washington as many World Series titles as Walter Johnson ever did. Uh, I think that it's insane that we got to this point. But this is one of the perils of a complete destruction rebuild. When you take a look at what the Nationals did, they did everything but trade away the Lincoln Monument after the 2019 World Series, after last year when they just put two sticks of dynamite in the team and blew it all up. And you could understand if, you know, Scherzer's going to leave via free agency, you want to get something back for him. They traded everything. They traded. And, and to, when he's looking around, he leads the league and walks. Why would he say a single strike? And there almost seemed to be a assumption like, hey, Juan, you know, we're going to blow it up and we're going to rebuild and you're going to be still here when, when it, it gets better. He may look around and say, I don't know if I want to sit through that. I don't know if I want to have my age 23, 24, 25 season playing for a triple A team. I've delivered a title to Washington. I want to have a, I want to be able to have my prime be playing meaningful games. And maybe this is the peril of blowing up a team too fast. It is, it is certainly hard to blame him given the circumstances that you just laid out. It's not like this is a small market team either. No. They're in DC in a major media market. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not the expos anymore. So I was thinking about this. In fact, I was talking to Stacey Gatsoulias, our friend at Locked on Yankees, about this yesterday, that if this were 1996, this would be the biggest story in sports, that a 23-year-old absolute dynamic superstar is going to be traded at the trade deadline, not even the offseason, during the season. Why do you, uh, Kevin Durant wants to be traded. It's the biggest story in sports. Why is this not a bigger deal in the sports landscape? Because baseball does a horrific job of marketing its stars. Do you want an example of that? There was a direct TV ad that came out where they had to combine Ghostbusters with baseball. So they had <laughs> to have recognizable baseball stars in it. They had Big Poppy, Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr., and Randy Johnson, <laughs> all of whom are retired. Three are in the Hall of Fame. The, why wasn't it Ronald Acuna, Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, and Juan Soto, or Max Scherzer, or Justin Verlander, or uh, Altuve, or whomever, that they don't market their stars? Mike Trout's the best player of this generation, and he could walk into virtually any place in America, with the exception of maybe Fullerton, Anaheim, and Orange, and no one would know who he is. What's, what's really remarkable and drives this point home is it was just a couple months ago we were having the same discussion on this show with our Locked On Angels host about Shohei Otani. And we're talking about it now with another player. And, and by the way, I saw a stat yesterday. Shohei Otani with, with runners in scoring position has the highest slugging percentage uh, of the modern era and has the best slugging percentage against with runners in scoring position in the modern era. He's doing something we have never, ever seen before, and yet it barely even makes news. Stay up to date on Major League Baseball by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and the Locked On MLB podcasts on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, how did we get here with the mess that is 
the Chicago Bears. Here's what to look for on Bet Online, your number one spot for all of your gambling needs. There is a stacked UFC card on Saturday night with a pair of title fights. The headliner, a women's bantamweight rematch between Amanda Nunez and Juliana Pena, has Nunez heavily favored to reclaim her belt. Bet Online has Nunez odds to win at minus 260. In the other title fight, flyweight champion Brandon Moreno defends his title against Kai Kara France. Bet online likes the champ to still be Moreno at minus 212. Bet online where the game starts. The infamous independent study addendum to Kyler Murray's contract has been removed, according to reports. Many saw the addendum as a referendum on Murray's commitment to winning. As for Kyler's thoughts on it all, to think that I can accomplish everything that I've accomplished in my career. Um, and not be a student of the game and not um, not not have that passion and not not take this serious is is almost it's disrespectful and it's it's almost it's it's almost a joke you know my personal opinion it's a joke that it had to be in there in the first place and guess what he signed the contract that had it in there in the first place There may have been some questions as to who is throwing him the ball, but there will be no questions as to where DK Metcalf will play football this year. The Seattle Seahawks star wideout inked a three-year, $72 million extension Thursday. The new contract includes $58 million in guarantees. $30 million of those guarantees is a signing bonus, which is the highest ever for a wide receiver. The 24-year-old Metcalf, who has one year and just under $4 million left on his rookie contract is now signed through 2025. This ends the short two-day holdout Metcalf had and makes him the highest paid Seahawk. The extension is shorter than Seattle typically makes for their big money second contracts and certainly shorter than most receivers would sign, but it gives Metcalf the opportunity to become a free agent when he is 28 and maybe play with a quarterback who isn't Drew Locke. Don't you just hate long meetings? Dan Snyder was put through the longest of meetings Thursday as the Washington Commanders owner testified for almost 11 hours during a private deposition Thursday with members of the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform regarding his franchise's workplace culture. After, you know, ducking a subpoena by hiding out on his yacht, I don't think anyone is going to be crying any real tears for Dan Snyder. He testified voluntarily. He insists... And under oath, the transcript will be made public, but that may take a few days as both sides have the opportunity to listen back to the audio and match it with what the transcript says for any errors. Snyder testified via Zoom as he was overseas. The committee did not issue a statement on Thursday. Yes, overseas on his yacht like a supervillain. Miami Marlins starting pitcher Daniel Castano was hit in the forehead by a 104 mile per hour line drive off the bat of Cincinnati Reds third baseman Donovan Solano on Thursday. According to Marlins manager Don Mattingly, the ball hit the bill of his cap and then ricocheted off the crown. Castano left the game with a concussion and bruised forehead. A post game CT scan was normal, luckily. When asked about the incident, Castano was not able to recall how he felt. When I woke up, I asked, What happened? I'm much better now. I'm a little bit tired, but I'll be all right a scary situation and it looks like serious injury has been avoided and the baltimore orioles lost in extra innings but may also have lost a starting pitcher to injury that was a tough one felt like the magic was at the yard again on wednesday night but the orioles lose six to four in 10 innings connor newcomb here host of locked on orioles and You know, in a game in which Tyler Wells leaves with injury, leaves a lot of uncertainty for the Orioles starting rotation moving forward. Brandon Hyde saying Wells is almost certainly going on the injured list. Just another injury to Orioles starting pitching. The bullpen keeps him in it. Jorge Mateo with a one-out solo homer in the ninth to tie the game. The O's get two on in the ninth. You feel like they're going to walk off again, get another comeback win, but it goes to extras. The Rays get the two runs in the tenth, and the O's could not come back this time. A tough loss, but still a game that shows you the O's are right in there with all of these other playoff contenders. And I'll recap it all coming up on Thursday's episode 
of the Locked On Orioles podcast. Roquan Smith may or may not be holding in. The offense is kind of a mess. What is going on in Chicago? Joining me now to try and figure it out, Lauren Cox from Locked On Bears. And Lauren, this is a season of upheaval in Chicago. New general manager, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. And yet they are doing theoretically what they can to give Justin Fields a chance this season at development. What is the problem right now with the offense? Because the reports are it is a mess. Yeah, I mean, the problem right now is that everything is so new, that they've done so much turnover across so much of this roster, but especially that offense around Justin Fields, that everybody is still getting used to everybody. New play caller, brand new, very new offensive line, a lot of new receivers, not always household names and plenty of room for criticism on on those fronts. But two days into training camp is not the time for me to, to start raising the alarms and saying that things are going to completely fall apart. There's there's a real talent deficiency but I think there's there's still plenty of time for what they do have to mesh together a little bit better and provide the best group they could possibly get with the names that they do have. From the outside, and and even taking off my Green Bay Packers uh, cheese head colored glasses for for this part of it, I look at what they did and I go, how are they doing everything they can to give Justin Fields the best chance to succeed this season? The offensive line. I know they just added Riley Reef, so that is a step in the right direction. The receiver room is a collection of of guys that that the USFL would probably um, be like just okay to have on their roster. So, what do you make of what they've done this off season and what it means for Justin Fields, who's trying to make a name for himself in the NFL? It's definitely not what I would consider the ideal situation for Justin Fields, but I don't know what exactly the Bears were supposed to do a lot differently. There's always little things you can change, but they entered this offseason with such little salary cap space relative to the number of things they needed to do on this roster, and they added to that salary cap space by getting rid of a lot of expensive players from the previous regime and still didn't have that much money to sign wide receivers, to sign offensive linemen, and still build a defense and the rest of the roster beyond Justin Fields. They got a lot more of it after their post-June 1st cuts came through, but at that point, most of your big fish in free agency are gone, and a lot of the the veterans that were out there for a long time, like Julio Jones in that style of player, don't want to come to Chicago for a rebuilding year on a one-year deal. So the window of of players that you could bring to Chicago that you could afford that would want to be in Chicago to help Justin Fields was a, a bit smaller. The Bears were stuck in between a little bit of a rock and a hard place. They prioritized some other spots in the roster where you could have done things slightly differently, but there was never a path toward a robust wide receiving core and a great offensive line and a great defense. They just didn't have a ton of opportunities to do so, and they're they're going to take some licks as a result. So you mentioned it is just day two of training camp. And so we don't want to make sweeping generalizations about the state of the team at this point in what you mentioned has been a tumultuous offseason. So what are you going to be looking for as signs of growth, of signs that this is going in the right direction from a place that really the only place they have to go is up? (laughs) Yeah, I think it's about having these wide open competitions across the roster solidify quickly, right? The whole plan is get a bunch of wide receivers that need to prove something to to the team. And somebody needs to prove something quickly. If we get, you know, into the second preseason game and they're still trying to figure out which of these receivers is going to be any good, then probably none of them are good. Same thing with the offensive line. If they're trying to find who's going to be their right tackle and it's, it's two weeks before the start of the regular season and they still don't know who the right tackle is going to be, then that means none of them are good. So if they can start to solidify a few of these positions, answer some of these questions sooner rather than later, then you can feel like, okay, they've got a plan, they've got this group in place, and now they can build as much chemistry and cohesion by week one to get on the best start possible and still understanding there is, there is a low ceiling there relatively overall. Stay up to date on the Chicago Bears by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Bears podcast on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Coming up, Shohei Otani needs to stay an angel. The Major League Baseball trade deadline is only a few days away, and many teams are joining the ranks of sellers. One of those teams, the Los Angeles Angels, who are reportedly listening on everyone, and that includes... Shohei Otani. 
John and Mike Fritch cover the Angels on a daily basis on Locked on Angels. And Mike feels rather strongly that trading Otani is a bad idea for multiple reasons. They should re-sign him and give him all the money because what's going to happen is we're going to need to find an ace and we're going to have to pay that ace 20 plus million dollars. And then we're going to need to find another hitter and we're going to have to pay that hitter 20 plus million Mm, mm dollars. And I think with Shohei, he actually is the best, the best of both worlds. And so mm-hmm. I think we should re-sign him. I don't think we should trade him. I don't think it's feasible for other teams to do that. And I would love for this guy to stay on the team. And there's there's a few reasons why, Johnny, but one of the major reasons why is because he's the Michael Jordan of Major League Baseball right mm-hmm. now. Eyes are on the Angels. Now, we may not want the Angels to be seen because they're so (laughs) terrible, right? But eyes are on the Angels. Here's some stats. Ratings from MLB games on Japanese television are up 400, 400 Mm. percent since Shohei came to the U.S. Wow. There's $20 million in endorsements before taxes and fees in 2022. That's three times more than last year. He's the fourth most followed MLB star on Instagram because that really matters, right? And so, <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Shohei is making $5.5 million this season. And yeah. for next year, he'll be up for arbitration. So that'll be interesting to see unless they sign him. It'll be interesting to see what they give him. And so I think that they should re-sign him. And I am over the conversation about, well, you can't have Trout and Rendon and Otani making all of this money on the team because it shows that the rest of the team can't be really, really great. I actually disagree after reading those numbers because mm-hmm. what we find there is that there is a whole lot of money that the Angels are making. Oh yeah, And, and what Artie is saying when he says, I don't want to go over the luxury tax, what he's saying is this, I don't want to spend the money. Right. I don't want to give up the money. Just sell the team. Just sell the team. If... You go from Mike Trout to Shohei Otani. Otani being one of the most unique superstar players we've seen in any sport and one of the most unique players in baseball history, at least the modern history. If you can't pony up the dough to keep that kind of player, sell the team because it would be better for everyone. Yes, as we talked about with Sully earlier, baseball is really bad at marketing its stars. But you know what would help? Some postseason play. You know how you go to the postseason, you have good players. You know who's really incredibly good? Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. Now, can they win games? Not consistently enough to be in the postseason with any sort of regularity. But that's what you have good players for. They are foundational. They are building blocks. You scour the globe trying to find guys like this. You wait lifetimes trying to find players like Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. If you can't keep them, if you can't pay to keep them, if you don't want to gouge your eyes out rather than not keep them, sell the team. And finally, remember when you just fudged the numbers and messed with the overall stats of your favorite players on Madden NFL football video games in the past. Now you can call someone and sit on hold to complain. Who says we aren't making progress as a society? The company launched a ratings hotline on Thursday where fans, players of the game, and theoretically actual NFL players could call to complain or make other comments about the latest Madden ratings, which were announced earlier this month. Thursday night, that hotline had received a 1,000 calls in its first day of operation, and honestly... That seems light. I would guess half of them were from actual NFL players or their families. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up Monday, where will we stand on the eve of the Major League Baseball trade deadline? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. Today. 